perpetuated by the government regarding this deal is of grave concern to all citizens. They did not dispute the price that Patriotic is now willing to pay for the refinery and paria. They did not dispute that the assets of the former Petrotrain were mortgaged by government. They did not dispute that Traffic Euro has indicated that they want full tax concessions and that would be a further blow to the Treasury, given that Paria has been remitting taxes to the people of Trinidad and Tobago for the past two years. They did not dispute that Paria will be included in the sale of the refinery. So these are matters that are facts, incontroverted facts, that they did not dispute. Instead of shedding light on the issues, they both chose to attack the messenger in order to deflect from the fact that they are incapable of responding to the message. And the message is that between July and November this year, the population has been taken on a roller coaster ride. Pre election, ready to sign. Post election, an October 31 deadline set with an ultimatum. Deadline met. Proposal rejected within one day of receipt, announced at a press conference. Then a couple of days later, Cabinet Subcommittee has been asked to review the patriotic uh, counter proposal. After all this to in and froing, the population deserves answers. Item two, two that I said I will deal with the price of the refinery. Government rejected the patriotic bid for US 700 million, accepted it um, when it was first made, but then offered a, what is it, a 13 year time period to pay. So, Patriotic off, had offered a, a 700 million upfront. Government gave them um, a 13 year period, really three years and then 10 years. Then, in a counter offer, Patriotic now offers US 500 million as the upfront payment. What is the price of the refinery and the um, Pario assets? What will be accepted? Be accepted on what terms? Has Patriotic been able to adequately demonstrate its ability to raise the necessary funds to make an upfront payment? Are these sources committed? Because the documents we have seen suggest otherwise. There seems to be no firm commitment from RBC with respect to providing the purchase price and no firm arrangement is in place. Even the MOU with Traffic Euro, a questionable source of restart financing, is non binding and so there is no real guarantee that these financing arrangements would materialize. Again, we are forced to question whether another buyer is lined up and this unpa unpatriotic facade of a pro-union, pro-worker say was nothing more than an election ploy. Three, the mortgage of the assets. If the government is considering an offer for 500 million now, what is the plan to deal with the balance of the amount owed to Mellon, the bank in New York, and the bondholder. The mortgage sum from the Bank of New York Mellon is US $1.173 billion. That's yes. If we convert that into TT, we are talking about almost just under $14 billion TT dollars. The bond is in the sum of US $850 million, so it takes us about $56 million. So the fixed and floating assets charge is over US a total of $1.9 billion. If US. If you sell the assets for 500 million, which is what has been proposed by um, Patriotic, the question is who is going to repay the US 1.9 billion that's outstanding? Is it taxpayers? Should taxpayers be burdened with debt? And I want to make this point. On Monday when I spoke, I said that the property was mortgaged. And when you're selling a mortgage property, you have to get the consent of the mortgagee and or you have to pay it off. You do, if you have a house mortgage, you just can't sell the house. And if you're selling under the value of what the, the amounts being owed, who is going to make up sure. the difference? Who's going to make up that shortfall? What are you going to do? Are you going to raid the HSF once more to find this 1.19 billion US dollars, less the 500 that you'll be given up front? 1.1, no, well, they put the two together, the bond, and the, the charge from Mellon, the bond from the Luxembourg bond, is 850 million, and the New York Bank is 1.173 billion, so that comes up to 1.9 US billion in total. So you are selling for US 500 million. Who is going to make up the difference in 1.4? It will be 1.4 billion dollars. Who is going to pay it? The taxpayers? 
a raid on HSF, more borrowings, how is that going to be satisfied? You see, when you're selling a property mortgage, you sell for the market value close to it as possible. So after the sale, you don't have to any debt that you will still be owing. What is the sense that you sell the refinery and remain with billions of dollars still in debt? I again ask, the bond listed on the Luxembourg Stock Exchange has conditions. Those conditions are in place. Has government been able to ascertain the fair market value of the assets which is required for the sale? Did they speak to the Bank of New York Mellon to determine if the conditions for the sale have been settled? Government is reporting to sell a refinery which is incumbent and there is no clear plan as to how the balance of the money is owed would be paid to date. There is no clear answer as to whether the terms of the sale are acceptable to the bondholders and lenders who have a charge on the assets. Last day when I spoke, I mentioned that you, you is it, will it be a legal sale? Did you get consents? Will you clear off the debt? And then I asked, but this was not reported, I asked when I spoke, yes, you can do it, but you have to satisfy the conditions which are for the bond. You have to pay 75% upfront. You have to get consent from them. For the uh, charge at uh, New York Mellon, again, you have to get consent, and you'll have to pay the 1.173. Where is this money going to come from? We got no answers from government. Item four, valuation of assets. What Deloitte did was a calculation based on the price provided to them by Patriotic, 700 million. But nowhere is there a professional valuation report stating the assets of the refinery in Paria would be a 500 million, 700 million. What Deloitte do, did was a, a patriotic send them a document. They send back a one pager, and that's what they're saying that these assets now, if you take net present value, will come down to 500 million. But they've had no sight of the refinery, they've done no valuation, no, I would say, no, no tenable valuation, and therefore can we rely on that Deloitte document? How can the population be satisfied that the assets which belong to the people are not being undersold? This is why a proper legislative framework for the disposal of public property was developed and passed by the People's Partnership Government. But the PNM is adamant that they are selling out to the country's most valuable assets without implementing this very important law, the procurement legislation. They don't want that level of oversight and accountability. We need a full implementation of the procurement legislation and subject the sale of refinery and of paria to the procurement legislation. In addition, it is now being alleged that government has set up uh, uh, persons to sell the real estate property at Petrotrin, the bungalows and all the other real estate um, uh, assets here that were formerly belonging to Petrotrin. Are you also going to sell this house to friends, to family, to finances? Are you going to, again, we call for the disposal of property, property procurement legislation? Are you going to sell out NP gas stations? We need the procurement legislation. You're planning to sell off the port or private partnership, which is a similar exercise. No procurement, no disposal legislation in place. I said the NP gas stations, the port, um, the other petrochemical assets in the real estate holdings, all of this without the required legislative. necessary legislative framework. So those are matters that definitely need some answers. The financing arrangements, traffic euro, item five when I started. Why did government insist on the MOU with Traffic Euro, given the international reputation and the link between Traffic Euro, Ruperity, and the Maduro regime? The government, when it um, said that uh, Patriotic was a preferred bidder, indicated that they had to come up with 10 uh, conditions, and one of them was the government, you know. It is the government that said you have to bring an MOU with Traffic Euro. Now they are saying they didn't have anything to traffic euro, that had to be Roger and what. The government one condition was bring an MOU with traffic euro, which, which, which they brought. They brought it forward. But why did the government insist? Why did they make it a condition precedent for, the MOU, for an MOU with traffic euro to uh, finalize um, these negotiations? Is the Delsi visit during the lockdown to PDVSA officials related to the MOU signed with traffic euro and the sale of fuel by Paria? to ES Euro shipping owned by Ruperity. Is this all just mere coincidence? Let the government answer. We call on the government to shed light, to bring answers. Has there been sufficient due diligence done? 
to establish the source of traffic euros funds that patriotic proposes to access and just as use a term, restart financing. Why is traffic euros so interested in Paris assets, which includes the port? Now remember something, huh? The MOU with uh, traffic euro is non binding. Remember also that traffic euro is saying once we sign this deal, you have to transfer the assets. Transfer the assets to them. So which worker is going to be an owner? Which worker is going to be an owner? Which national of our country is going to be an owner? If it is that you're going to transfer the asset, assign the assets to Trafigura, who will be the owners then? Because you're going to give it to Trafigura in return for the 500 million restart financing. Serious, serious questions to be answered. There is a perception by some that I attacked the union and the labor movement. That is total nonsense, absolutely false. What I demanded was an explanation, justification, transparency for disposal of the assets belonging to taxpayers. That is all right. These assets do not belong to Rowley and Roger. They belong to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Just for clarification, Patriotic is not OWTU. So again, that is another deception in a sense or misinformation that you're saying you're selling to the workers, but Patriotic is not OWTU. Who are the owners of Patriotic? Is it the OWTU workers who will now have a chance at owning these assets, or is it some other group? Are the thousands of workers robbed of their jobs at Petrotrin, thousands of more who were employed supporting Petrotrin? Are these people owners of Patriotic? Will they have a say in how the company will be run and who will share in the benefits and profits of the company, Patriotic? It is bandied about the OWT owns Patriotic. But is that really so? There are no public records at the registry up to today. I had a search um, done at the public registry stating who are the shareholders of this company. There is no public record. There are no stakeholders listed. What there, are, there is, there are two persons as the directors. I think one is... Um, uh, Mm. Richard Lee and the other one, um, Ozzy, 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 Ozzy Warwick. They are listed as directors, and I think Mr. Richard Lee, no relation, no relation to MP Lee, <laughs> Richard Lee is listed, I think, as a secretary. They have filed no um, annual return in the, in the company's registry. They are indeed a shell company. There is no share capital, there is no shareholder. It's a shell company. And I'm told that one of the government's advisors has indicated to the government that um, they don't have the $500 million to pay for the assets that they're seeking to buy. The queries I raised today, why is it after 11 months, no annual return for 2019? None, no shareholders, no shareholders and no directors, even though they had made for a minimum of so many directors, maximum of so many, none are listed apart from the two names that I call. So why is it that neither Rowley nor Roger were able to answer the questions that were raised? The queries we, I raised were for the benefit of all taxpayers of the country, including the former employees of Petrotrin. And Rowley lied when he said he was not closing on Petrotrin, so why should we believe him now? And when he did close it, remember the famous fridge door statement, in case you were closing your fridge door and you didn't hear me, I will repeat, the government is not closing down Petrotrin. One of the most disgraceful acts that we have ever seen. You want to talk about shameless and disgraceful? That was shameless and disgraceful. That is the, one of the greatest tragedies in the history of Trinidad and Tobago, that shutting down a Petrotrin. When you told the country you were not shutting it down, that's exactly what you turned around and did. And all, 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 everyone lost their jobs. The entire region of South Trinidad has been adversely affected by this closure. And why was Petrotrin shut down? All the reports that were done, not a single report commission said to shut down Petrotrin. They all spoke about restructuring Petrotrin. So why did you close it down? Was it because your best friend was involved in some fake oil matter with Petrotrin? It appears. In the same way we had fake oil, we now have a fake refinery deal that will further plunge our country into darkness. We as elected representatives of the people have a responsibility to raise these issues and no amount of bullying, no amount of um, 
saying we are ranting, none of your bullying is going to stop us from raising issues for the benefit and in the interest of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. We have to raise these issues. We are not going to be silenced by the meaningless rhetoric and a madman's rant. We are committed to bringing light to counteract the darkness created by the lack of transparency and accountably, accountability of this Rowley administration. There's another matter I, I would just briefly touch on. I raise issues with the, with, with the banks and the, the risks associated with our banks. Uh, Prime Minister Rowley said our banking sector is strong. Imbo talked about an IMF assessment report. When I say Imbo, I'm giving you another chance. Stop lying. I asked you on Monday night, was there another more recent report relating to the fitness of our banks, the risks associated? I repeat that question to you. Is there another report after the IMF report which deals with risk in our banking sector? I give you another opportunity to shed light and if you don't, I will release the report that I have here, which is, which is dated a totally different date from the IMF report. This is one done, which you should have um, a copy of. So here we have the patriotic. Um, can you ask Maria to bring that document back, please? In the meantime, I, I am very surprised. The documents I gave to her, ask her to bring it. I am very surprised that uh, the editorial in this newspaper this was a Business Guardian, some of the comments coming when they are the ones who talked about an unpatriotic blunder. Unpatriotic blunder, now wanting to label what we are saying an unpatriotic blunder. So have a feeling, but we will not give up and we will not stop. This is a document, a letter dated October 29, 2020, which is a counter proposal from patriotic to the government. This is a statement of charge against the assets that they are attempting to sell. And I have one more document. I have the report, a recent report relating to the banking sector. Should the government refuse to, should, this is it. I will not show you from who it is to be, but I have it, Minister Seinberg. You need to come clean, you need to shed light on the probability of default reporting from March 31 to March 31. 2020, 19 to 20, but the actual document has a different date. So, more recent one than the document from IMF. So, I give you one more chance. Come clean. Let us know what's happening. I thank you all very much, and we are open to questions. The date of the, um, the report with respect to the banking sector is October 29, 2020. Minister, are you aware of this document? And will you shed some light to give us some hope? with respect to our banking sector. Yeah. No, because because the, the, this is a come November one they um, rejected the that proposal of October twenty ninth. However, remember they set up another co a committee again to, to, to do another evaluation to do another evaluation, evaluation of the bid. So there's it's, it's still pending. It is not moved, it is still pending. All right, the question that Kijan asks is wouldn't all these questions now be moot um, because uh, the government had already rejected the, the points made in the proposal of October 29? And I'm saying to you, Kivan, the government rejected it and then they, they put back another committee to look at it again, to reevaluate. Kivan is asking me, wouldn't it be easier to wait until the end of the month before making declarations? as a bid may be rejected again. No, I think it is very important that the country knows that there must be transparency in, the, in these secret deals that are going down. People need to know. And that itself may create some uh, influence on government in the way that they continue to, in the way that they continue to go forward in terms of uh, the revaluation of what they're doing. Why wait? This is not selling a corn soup down on the street corner. You know, it's not selling doubles down in David Junction. This is talking about one of the most valuable assets of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. People need to know why should they wait when it's rejected or it's accepted. And they've already started to play the narrative to blame me if the deal falls through. When, when all the things that are there are already in there that would cause the deal to fall through, the issues of the, pr the, the price of the, the, um, of the sale, the purchase price, the issues about the lien, the charges are against, all those issues are very important issues that need to be answered. So it seems to be you're setting up the workers to make them feel 
And this has been going, kicking the can down the road, two and four, back and forth, going on for years. And people need to know, I think it is very important, and government needs to give these answers. They need to provide answers to the population about what's going on in these negotiations. So if they come and accept it, reject it, we know, and they will know that we are following them and the country is looking at them. So they will have to do it in an appropriate manner. Urvashi, opposition leader, has said she is giving government one more chance to complain. So I'm asking, or else what? What happens if they don't respond? Well, I, I made that, uh, that comment in relation to the report about the banking sector. And if they don't respond, if they don't let country know about our latest report, then I'll have no, uh, I'll have no choice but to release that report that I have in my possession. I'm giving them a chance with respect to the status of our banking sector and the vulnerabilities in the banking sector. I do not want to put this out to create any undue anxiety. So if government can answer this, fine. Let us hear from them, Minister Imbert especially, on the report in the banking sector. Report dated October 29, 2020. The question from Sean Douglas is, uh, any views on government slash and CAPE scholarship, 400 million? To 100 million as announced by the Minister of Education today. I think this is another um, another matter for grave concern. This government can find money to pay $23 million in rent to one of their colleagues. They can find money to uh, give out all these contracts for um, financing arrangements with the, with the friends and the family of, of, of another cabinet colleague. They can find money for paintings and so can the seas and room and everything else except to invest in the children in the future and our human resources in the country. So I, I would seriously call upon them to reconsider this. Um, of course we have to restructure K, but you need to you need to do it in a manner. Let me remind you, you know, when Mr. Pandey was the Prime Minister, this was the same amount of scholarship, it was one hundred. One hundred it was one hundred and you were cutting it down to one hundred scholarships. When the price of oil was nine dollars a barrel. Nine dollars a barrel. Over the years, we, we have increased it. Whilst we were there, we increased the number of scholarships and so on as the oil money came in. Of course, oil is not $9 a barrel now. Yes, it is low. Um, so that's with respect to the scholarships. The gate, so you're going to take money away from gate. You'll be fine to pay $23 million plus another 20 $43 million for your attorney general. This is totally unacceptable. And I condemn government for this backward, regressive move. The most important resource we have is human resource. We should resource our young people so that you can prepare for today and for tomorrow. Um, please answer this question. The audio is not too good. The Prime Minister spent a lot of time stating that one of the main reasons he brought this statement on Monday, what was it? one of the main reasons he brought this statement on Monday was because of the message to Joe Biden. Can you please resolve? The Prime Minister is fixated on matters. I am moving along. We have things to do. We have the people's business to see about. This is the people's business, and that's why I brought it. Wherever I find anything that is not transparent, that is not to the benefit of the people of Trinidad and Tobago, I will expose it. And no amount of this humiliation and again ranting and raving, that's not going to stop us. Where was she? The opposition obviously believes there is something untoward with the petrochemical sale, given the international eyes on Venezuela and anything connected to Venezuela. TNT's reprimand from the U.S. and all the possible repercussions. Do you really believe the TT government will dare to do business with Venezuela? They did business with Venezuela. Madame Delcy came to Trinidad and Tobago when she was under sanction, when the aircraft she was um, uh, she came here on was under sanctions. So this government really thinks that everybody in this country, everyone is a fool. They will feel they can get away. That's why we have to, that is why we have to expose where we see things happening. And um, again, why is the government insisting on the MOU with Traffic Euro? Remember, that was one of the 10 conditions. Given the international reputation and the link of the Traffic Euro and Ruperti and the Maduro regime. So yes, I, I don't know them. They are bold-faced enough. They're bold facing up and then they come after crying and, and ranting and raving, fake outrage, when the hand might well be hands might well be inside of the cookie jar. Rashi, I hope that helps you. Mm -hmm. uh, the 
Trump's referred to the Sanders deal, saying that this could be detrimental to the deal. Are you concerned that such public statements could jeopardize any potential deal with OWTU and the government? No. If there's a good deal, the good deal will, will, will prevail. Um, Compare it to the Sanders bacchanal that went on. That's not no way to run away real investors. No one that investors care about is they want to make money. And if it is a good deal that they can benefit from, they will come. Me or anyone who must talk about Sanders, reminded the population of Sanders, that's not going to drive away any serious investor in, 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 in a negotiation in three months where um, you know, it's, it's going to benefit them. May I remind you that this problem we are in now with the mortgage with the charge against the assets and the bondholders, the Luxembourg bond, uh, business of market. Let me tell you why we are here, you know. They are saying that Petrogen wasn't making money, that's why they closed it, and that's not why. It is because of that bond, but that, that was taken away by Mark Comptures, let's remember that, you know, that is what put Petrogen down in a hole, in a ditch. It was the old, the old peer of Mark Comptures. And what happened? When the partnership 